Whenever I first introduce someone to Deep Rock and attempt to explain anything relating to promotions, the Forge, Matrix cores, or deep dives, it becomes a complicated word spaghetti mess. There's a lot to take in after promotion. So this video is for anyone who is confused about Endgame or deep dives in particular and wants to know what they are, how they differ from regular missions, and some tips on how to effectively do a deep dive. Deep dives are weekly missions that are shared by all players. These were introduced in September 2019 as part of Update 25, which focused on adding more endgame content to DRG. Deep dives are longer than a regular mission and comprised of three stages. Each of these has two objectives and often mutators. The time it takes to complete a deep dive varies depending on the objectives and player skill. I'd say it could take a player anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour at most. One of the most confusing parts of these missions is there are a lot of little changes to them compared to regular missions, and I'll go through most of those in a bit. But one of the most important distinctions is that health, ammo, nitra, and gold is all carried through each stage. So if you're low on ammo and health at the end of the first stage, it will be the same on the next one. But before we dig into more details, let's run through how to gain access to deep dives in the first place. If you're a new player and you head over to the deep dive terminal, you'll get a pop-up that says you haven't been promoted yet. A lot of people don't understand how promotions work, which is understandable because they're kind of confusing. I'll quickly sum up how to promote a class as there are a few steps to doing it. Step one is to get to level 25 with any class. To see what level your dwarf is, look at the little red number underneath their portrait. It's often confused with this blue badge in the corner, which is a different thing called your player rank. So what's your player rank then? Well, it's a number that increases each time you level or promote any class. Three levels or promotions will increase your player rank by one. Think of it like an overall player level that isn't specific to one class. As your player rank increases, you get access to prestige assignments, which reward you new cosmetics. Okay, so now we know the difference between player rank and class level. Good stuff. Let's move back to the next step for promotions. Once a dwarf is level 25, a new assignment will pop up in your assignment board. So head over to that bad boy in the rig, select your class's promotion assignment, and away you go. This assignment will have four missions that are different, depending on what class you're promoting. And I'll put each of those on the screen right now when I, when I edit this video. Look at those. Look at how nice they look up there. Isn't that cool? By the way, when you're doing a promotion mission, you can choose to play any class. You do not have to stick to playing the class that is being promoted. And I'd recommend playing another class because you can no longer gain experience once you hit level 25. After you complete this assignment, your funny little dwarf man will finally be eligible for promotion. Congrats, let's have a, let's have a little party. To actually promote though, you have to be in a solo lobby first. This is a weird thing, I don't really know the technical details behind it, but basically just head to the main menu and leave the team if you're in a multiplayer lobby. Now you make the long and intense journey to the Memorial Hall, which is just up the elevator next to the equipment terminal. Pay respects to your fellow dwarves and go to the terminal in the back that says promotion. Hope you have enough materials and credits to pay the fee because for some reason DRG is a company where you pay to get promoted. I don't even know how this works. I, I don't know. But DRG is not really employee centric, so I guess it makes sense. And there it is. You're promoted. Mission Control will give you one of his handful of totally not pre-recorded speeches, and whichever class you promoted now has access to deep dives and a few other extra goodies. Now that you can participate in a deep dive, let's dig into how these differ from a regular mission. Deep dives are preceded weekly, meaning if you do the same dive multiple times, it will be the same cave each time. The terrain will not regenerate each time like a regular mission. Like I said in the beginning, deep dives have three stages. Each of these has two objectives, and you'll notice that the typical secondaries like Bulu Caps, Fester Fleas, or Ebo Nuts, etc. are all absent in deep dives. In their place is a smaller primary objective. For example, a stage could have something like 250 Morkite and two eggs as a secondary. So every stage is essentially just a mix and match of two different mission types. If you've watched my Caves of DRG video, which is now a year old as of uploading this, you would know that each mission type has a different kind of cave generation. In deep dives, the cave type is determined by the first and main objective. Due to how some of these mission types work, not all of them can be in the secondary position. On-site refining, escort duty, and point extraction only occur as primaries in deep dives. This leaves us with a total of 31 different combinations available for a stage. Also, if you end up with a black box and you're confused on what the hell that is, it's essentially just like an uplink on salvage, but as a secondary. Another thing you might have noticed is the lack of crafting materials. 
Deep dives do not generate crafting materials, and this is because they could be easily farmed and devalue regular missions significantly. It'd be easier to collect minerals by repeatedly doing the same mission over and over since it doesn't regenerate. The only way to get crafting materials in a deep dive is through finding a Huli Hoarder. In a similar vein, deep dives also don't generate machine events, lost packs, cargo crates, compressed gold, bitter gem, and error cubes. This may seem like a deal breaker, but the payout in credits and experience still makes them worth it, and there are other rewards that I'll talk about in just a bit. You might be wondering, what's the difficulty of a deep dive? They don't mention any hazard levels, so what am I in for? The difficulty depends on which one you choose. Obviously, the regular deep dive is easier and the elite is much harder. In a regular deep dive, stage one is hazard three, stage two is hazard three and a half, and it stays at three and a half on stage three. And two of the stages will have warning mutators. On an elite deep dive, it will increase by a half each stage, starting at hazard four and a half on stage one, going up to hazard five on stage two, and on the final stage, it goes up to five and a half. In elites, there can be two or three warning mutators. Even with the hazard levels in mind, deep dives can vary in difficulty pretty drastically, and this is especially noticeable in elites. All right, this is the part everyone's excited about, rewards. The payout in credits and experience is pretty dang great, usually sitting at around 15,000 credits and 20,000 experience. But you also receive Matrix Cores. These are used at the Forge in the Space Rig and can grant a few different goodies. Weapon overclocks, cosmetics, and crafting materials. Weapon overclocks are basically equipable upgrades that can change up your weapon in a variety of ways. Another type of Matrix Core that is offered is a blank one. These won't have anything in them initially, but must be infused at a machine event. Once you randomly encounter one of these during a mission, you can complete it, put your blank Matrix Core in the Core Infuser, and choose one of three reward options. Each stage of a deep dive will give you one Matrix Core, and it'll be a different one depending on what stage it is. Stage 1 will give you a blank core, Stage 2 will give you a weapon overclock core, and Stage 3 will give you a cosmetic core. It's important to know that doing the deep dive for a second time will not grant the player with more matrix cores. You can only receive three matrix cores per deep dive. Next, I have some small details that I thought were important to mention about the deep dives, but I didn't really know where to put them. Beer buffs will carry through each stage of the deep dive, so it's always a good idea to have a round beforehand. Active perks with limited uses will be reset after each stage, so Iron Will could be used once per stage or Heightened Senses twice per stage, you get the idea. Bosco's revives also reset each stage. If a player is left behind on the first or second stage of the deep dive, they'll be revived and in the pod at the start of the next stage. Deep dives reset each week on Thursday at 11am UTC. And here's what that time is in various different time zones. I also want to go through some tips I have for doing deep dives. Uh, this will be mostly important when doing elites. My first tip kind of goes against the dwarven lifestyle, but you should ignore gold in deep dives. Timing is really important and the payout is already extremely high on deep dives. You truly do not need to mine the gold to get decent credits. My second tip is to be fast. The faster you are, the less ammo you'll spend. Complete the objectives and leave. And remember, there are no crafting materials, cargo crates, machine events, or lost packs, so if you don't explore an entire cave, you're not going to be missing much. That being said, it's important to balance time and team safety. For example, if you're doing an egg mission and you decide to get multiple eggs at the same time, you could cause a real disaster for your team and end up losing the mission. This leads right into tip three, which is try to avoid overlapping swarms unless you're sure your team can handle it. If you know when swarms happen on a specific mission type, try to plan around that for the secondaries. On mining expedition, point extraction, and on-site refining, there are uncontrollable swarms that just happen over time. Egg missions have controllable swarms. They only happen when you mine an egg. And salvage, escort duty, and elimination are kind of a weird mix of both. Tip number four is do secondary objectives early on point extraction and on-site refining, especially if it's a black box. Tip number five, if you don't like surprises, you can check the DRG subreddit or Discord to see what's in store for each stage of the weekly deep dives. There's usually a post pinned on the subreddit and you can just click on that and check it out. I know for some people, they just like to know what they're getting into each week. So I think this is pretty handy. And that's all I've got for this short guide to deep dives. There might be some tips or details I missed. And if you have anything to help out some green beards, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I hope this video helps out anyone who's confused about deep dives or is just struggling to get through elites consistently. Also go follow me on Twitter at sniss underscore, link in the description. That would, that would be nice. I'm just gonna sit there and talk about how bad I want the Steam Deck or something. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. I've been making Deep Rock stuff for a year now. The support from the community has been so wonderful. 
I'm glad I can make stuff about a video game I like, and all the people who also like the video game like that stuff. That's good. <laughs> I, I like that. So thank you. Rock and Stone.